Each year, the National Climate Change Adaptation Research Facility, or NCARF, holds a nationwide search for adaptation champions. These champions are people or organisations taking action to prepare for the impacts of climate variability and change. In 2012, the Department of Primary Industries in Victoria was chosen as the Climate Adaptation Champion in the Government category. Their innovative extension program delivers climate services and products to farmers through face-to-face -face sessions, training and animations. We've spent a lot of time working with farmers in the last four years, um, looking at communicating the latest climate and engaging farmers in a way that um, uh, can perhaps better help them with their decision making. So we've had 400 face-to-face -face sessions with over 20,000 uh, people in the last four years. And through that interaction, I guess, really crafted uh, alternative um, approaches to, to better engaging with farmers. Using uh, the, the animation such as the climate dogs, which, which are really a 60 second summary of the latest climate science, but done in a way which farmers find quite amusing, but also it has elements where farmers have observed certain elements of their seasons changing, such as cold fronts in Victoria, uh, more often slipping to the south. A lot of farmers, I think, like Enso as the border collie. Um, and some, some school kids I know like Sam because he looks a bit rugged. I, I particularly like Ridgey because he's, he's, he gets the most laughs, I think. So, um, and there's been a, a recent addition which was uh, Easty which is uh, to east coast lows, which drop big, big amounts of rainfall in the eastern part of Victoria. And so for farmers, one of the important things um, as a foundation for adaptation is understanding what's the difference between normal variability versus some of those uh, seasons or, or changes which might be happening more often. So for Victoria, that situation was around the story of cold fronts, which more regularly nowadays slip to the south. Um, when we speak to farmers uh, and ask them 25 years ago uh, if you saw a cold front of, of Perth, what would you be thinking? They would think rain in three days. Um, if we ask them if you see a cold front off the coast of Perth today, what would you be thinking? They think, oh, it'll probably slip to the south and we may not get rain. Uh, that pattern, I guess there's some very good climate science to say that, you know, that, that what you've observed is happening and it's expected to continue. That's a key foundation for how farmers start to think about, well, what does that mean for our farm and, and what changes do we make in our farm management to, to cope with that? We've had um, delivered over 400 face-to-face -face sessions with farm groups from ranging from as few as half a dozen people you know, up to 100 um, and that's with over 20,000 people and that's been our DPI extension team and we've got a few staff who, who really like getting out and, and really enjoying translating this in a way that makes sense to farmers and it's by word of mouth where one farm group would then go, well, that was pretty interesting. Could you come and do that for our group? And as the farmers are making decisions to try and make their, their lives and farms better off in future, the first decisions are usually uh, things that you can do fairly quickly and cheaply, and they just sort of happen. Um, but as you go up the order of decisions, there's, there's the first decisions, then bigger decisions, and then the tough decisions. So the first decisions we tend to do automatically uh, the bigger decisions are one where you have to be more confident that a change is needed and, and it is quite often a bigger change to your farm system or it's more expensive. So you would only do it if you were fairly sure that a certain change perhaps in the seasons or the weather was actually going to be for a longer term. And as you go up the, the scale of tougher decisions, that's where you're needing greater confidence that any particular change uh, that you're trying to make um, needs to be underpinned by some confidence about you know, that this is what it looks like that, that the science is suggesting that this change is going to be here for a while. So whether it's adapting to warmer springs or, or what have you, I guess what we're seeing is farmers doing things along each of those categories from the things they can do now versus some changes which will be a good investment for the next 10 years. Uh, and so I guess that's sort of how we're trying to, to frame it and largely when we look at a lot of the the seasons and the variability of the last sort of five years, um, you know, the farmers are interested in practical strategies that can help them manage for no matter what the weather does. So I guess that's, that's the space that we've, a lot of the discussion tends to happen. Nominations for the 2013 Climate Adaptation Champions close on the 12th of April. Winners will be announced in late June at the NCARF Climate Adaptation Conference in Sydney. For more information, visit the NCAF website.